schoolyard joys so precarious during the pandemic and in this latest wave still so tricky to hold on to. Our staffing's got worse actually. We've never had more staff absence. This classroom at an elementary school near Liverpool sits empty. Dozens of students stuck at home as cases spike again. Teachers who were infected before getting infected for the second time, I just uh, had a week off school because I was infected. So we're asking when will this end? And what does the end actually look like? More than two years into the pandemic, the UK is seeing its highest ever COVID case counts. In the last full week of March, it's estimated that one in 13 people in England were infected. As cases climb, COVID hospitalizations in England have doubled over the past month. Some hospitals imploring people to stay away unless they're in life-threatening condition. The surge is being fueled by the BA2 Omicron variant, but researchers here have also detected a new strain, Omicron XE, likely no more severe, but potentially 10% more transmissible. We might just end up with constant levels of quite high sickness in your population, and, and that just cannot be a good thing. Like we are in a worse position than we were in before. There we are. The way out, along with vaccination, more masking and better ventilation are key, says this expert. In the long term, it's this kind of short-term thinking that I think has doomed us to these constant kind of boom-bust cycles. On London's Oxford Street, there are few masks, and despite the surge, seemingly few thoughts of the pandemic. I used to get a bit scared about it, but I'm not really that bothered about it anymore. I kind of forgot about it, to be honest. Lonre Forasanti always has a mask in his pocket. In confined spaces, yes. So there's always a face mask. I carry one around, um, but in open spaces, no. Trying to find the right balance, learning to live with COVID. Ellen Morrow, CBC News, London.